Crystal, thank you for those beautiful remarks and, and uh, especially for your goodness that, that influences everyone who knows you. That's obvious this morning. Elder and Sister Kieran, President and Sister Coway, faculty, family, friends, aloha. <clears throat> Elder and Sister Kieran, this morning, <laughs> may I try and quickly be voice for all of us in this auditorium. We love you. And we hope you deeply feel our hearts sustaining you. You graduates, please listen carefully today to Elder Kieran. You'll never forget this morning. And then in April, and in conferences thereafter, wherever you are in the world, make sure that you are always present to sustain the Lord's prophets and apostles. Sorry for that tears, <laughs> those tears. Graduates, congratulations to you. We are so excited to be here with you today. As you walk past and we got to say hello to you, and as you sit here, you look wonderful. You look so happy. A few of you probably passed in your last final exam this week, and you look relieved. <laughs> All of you have family and friends who love you, and many of them have traveled to be here today, like Crystal said. Later today, even though everyone's attention and celebration will be focused on you, will you please find a moment to put your arms around those people who are here supporting you today and whisper to them your sincere thanks. You are graduating from one of the great universities in the world, a university with deeply committed faculty, staff, and administration. Thank you to each of you who serve our students. Sincerely, thank you. You serve with expertise, you serve with enthusiasm, and you do so while fundamentally building faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, and we're grateful to you. And a huge thank you to President and Sister Coway. Most of us only see them in a few public moments like today. And in those moments, the Coways certainly sparkle. Let me assure you, they also shine in private moments as well. They are deeply committed to you and to this university. President Coway didn't apply for his assignment as the president. He was appointed pre his appointment as president came as a complete surprise to him and Sister Coway. The decision to call Dr. Coway to serve as President Coway was made by the First Presidency. And along with his assignment came a charge, a responsibility with clear objectives outlining what the First Presidency and the Lord expect President Coway and this university to accomplish. That is the single thought I want to share with you today. BYU Hawaii is led by the prophet. It is led by the Savior's prophets and apostles. Following the Savior and his prophet and apostles is the very core of the identity, purpose, and direction of this university. As both the world and each of us individually encounter the prophesied commotion and calamities, I add my testimonies to yours if we will deliberately choose to follow Jesus Christ and his prophets and apostles, hope and confidence will prevail in our lives. We will be prepared for the Savior and his coming reign, and the gates of hell 
will not prevail against us. Elder D. Todd Christofferson and Elder Ronald A. Rasband, both of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, were recently assigned to inaugurate the new presidents of BYU and BYU-Idaho. That, by the way, makes President Coway now one of the old presidents. In his inaugural remarks, Elder Rasban taught something that applies to us here at BYU-Hawaii today. It is important to recognize, he said, that this institution operates under the guidance of a unique and distinctive board of trustees. BYU-Hawaii is founded, supported, and guided by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. BYU's board is led by the First Presidency with President Russell M. Nelson serving as chairman. This prophetic governance structure creates a tremendous advantage for BYU-Hawaii, for President Coway, for the work of our faculty and staff, and for the spiritual development of each of this university's students. Now please note this final thought from Elder Rasband. The leadership of the First Presidency allows, in fact, it compels us to do things differently at this university than could be done anywhere else in the world. To borrow an inspiring thought from President Jeffrey R. Holland, he said, with a bit of my application to us today, President Nelson, who we have all come to cherish as the Lord's prophet and mouthpiece on the earth, also chairs our board of trustees. He holds our purse strings and has the final yea or nay on every proposal we make, from the new Banyan Dining Hall, which is magnificent, by the way, to the coming McKay Complex, which will strengthen BYU-Hawaii's Christ-centered foundation and student-focused direction for generations. President Holland concluded, President Russell M. Nelson, is very, very good at listening to us. And those of us who participate with him on the board have learned the value of listening very carefully to him. This university and what you've experienced here is directly led by those we sustain as prophets, seers, and revelators. Please remember, prophetic leadership invites and even compels us to do things differently than anyone else in the world as you commence today. If you and I choose to do so, the Savior's prophet will lead us to the Lord, who is the author of our faith, the prince of our ability to find peace in an increasingly discontent world, and the healer of all that is broken in our lives. I add my simple testimony to yours. Jesus Christ is the tender mercy of God the Father and the only source of our happiness. I pray we will choose, as President Nelson has implored, to let God prevail in our lives, where we will find joy in every circumstance and extend that joy to the world in your service. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.